To wrap up the income statement, in this video, we will talk a little more about the rules of recognizing revenue and expenses. First, revenue. Revenue can be recorded when it is realized or realizable. That means we have to either have received cash already or anticipate receiving cash in the future. The second criteria for recording revenue is that it is earned. This simply means the good or service has been provided to the customer. It is very important to remember that revenue can be recorded before cash is received. We see this when we record accounts receivable. In order for us to record accounts receivable and revenue, we just have to expect to be able to collect cash in the future. And we also have to have provided the good or service. So remember, accounts receivable arises when we've provided the good or service, we've earned the revenue and we need to record it, but we haven't received the cash yet. So at the same time, we're gonna record accounts receivable and revenue. Remember also, there may be a time when we receive cash before we provide our good or service. Receiving cash is not enough to recognize revenue. It's only part of the rules related to revenue recognition. We also have to have earned the revenue or provided the good or service. So if we receive cash before providing a good or service, we need to record a liability. Remember back from our liability videos, we called this liability unearned revenue. If you are still unclear on unearned revenue, I recommend going back to the liability video two where we covered the topic. Let's move into rules around recording expenses. Expenses should be recorded in the period they help us generate revenue. This is when we say the expense is actually incurred and can be recorded on the income statement. It is critical to remember what we need to do if we incur a cost that will help you generate revenue in the future. As we learned in the videos covering assets, we need to record costs that will benefit us in the future as an asset and then move them to an expense over time. Examples of this include inventory, which gets moved to an expense called cost of goods sold when we sell the inventory. Another example, which we already looked at as well, is a building, which will be expensed each period through depreciation expense. Additionally, expenses must be recorded in the period incurred even if cash has not yet been paid. Examples of this scenario include payables. We record the expenses for salaries, utilities, income tax when we have incurred those expenses, meaning in the period they have benefited us or helped us generate revenue. If we have not paid cash for those expenses yet, then we will still have to record the expense on the income statement, but instead of reducing cash, we will record a payable for those items. The last thing I want you to do before we close this video on the income statement is look at a company's income statement that was included in their 10K. We should be familiar with most of the items on this income statement. This is Nike's income statement. The only thing you might be unfamiliar with is the line item titled Demand Creation Expense. This is a line item unique to Nike. Remember we looked up a line item on Netflix's balance sheet in their 10K? I did the same thing already with this line item to see what it was for Nike. I hadn't seen this account title before. It's just Nike's fancy way of saying advertising expense. Advertising does have to be expensed in the period it is incurred. It can't be recorded as an asset initially, even if it's going to benefit us in the future. It's just one of those crazy accounting rules. So it makes sense that we would see a fairly large line item on Nike's income statement for advertising expense. There are a few other noteworthy items on this income statement. First, we see the income statement says for the year ended, because remember, this is a total of net income over the course of the year. 
not since the inception of the company, only for that period, only for that year. And their year ends on May 31st instead of December 31st, which companies can do. They can end their fiscal year at any time. We also see there are three years of data on the income statement. This is common, even though there are only typically two years of data on the balance sheet. Finally, at the bottom of the income statement, we see earnings per share. This is an incredibly important number to companies because investors place great emphasis on earnings per share. We aren't going to cover it in these modules, but you will definitely cover it in more detail in any accounting classes you may take. That ends our videos on the income statement. In the next couple of videos, we will start looking at how various transactions impact the accounting equation.